Hey friends, this is our week. This is the week of the Champions Club happening this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We're developing winning through the word. So join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Did you know that you can access your Christian education class online according to your age group? That's right. Just scan the QR code on the screen. You can also access Christian education through GET's mobile app or on my-get.org. See you online. If you are in middle school or high school, we have a lot of fun stuff planned for you this summer including Six Flags. So make sure you scan your QR code and follow us on Instagram at GET Youth for more information. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Did you miss last week's service or would like to stay up to date with all of our pastor sermons? You can now on our posted social links through our new website. Go check it out at my-get.org. Not only can you catch up on services you've missed, but you can also have insight on all of our upcoming events and access all of our church's resources. If you have not yet, go visit the site today.
Jesus. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is deserving of the glory, isn't he? God is deserving of the honor, isn't he? God is deserving of the praise, isn't he? Well, come on, can you open up your mouth and put a sound on your praise? If it means anything to you, can you display his praise this place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we read the word this morning? Can we read the word this morning? Hallelujah. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget all his many benefits. Yeah. Anybody come to bless the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Did you come to bless the Lord this morning? Well, let's do it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands like this. Come on, clap. We're going to take it back a little bit. Come on, clap, 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 clap your hands. Come on, come on. That's your job this morning. Come on. Directly clap. Come on. Hey. Where my cha-cha step was at? Come on. You ready? Do it. Come on. It's okay to cha-cha in his presence. It's okay. He ain't gonna them. Hallelujah. Right here. Say, I will.
According to the word, he responds to it. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word is going to what? It's going to remain. Hallelujah. 
Psalms 18 says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation. Here's my favorite point. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. David wrote that song when the Lord delivered him from the hands of Saul. And when you find your praise, your, 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 yourself in a place where you appreciate what God is delivering you from, you got to be in something to get delivered. You got to be afflicted to be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. The song says, I love you, oh Lord, my strength. I love you, oh Lord, my strength. I love you, yes, Lord. Oh Lord, my strength. I love you. Ah. Oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my pillar, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock. Oh, yeah. The Lord is my pillar, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock. In whom I take refuge. Listen. He is my shield. And the horn of my salvation. He is my shield. And the horn of my salvation. Say. He is my shield. And the horn of my salvation. He's my high tower. He's my high tower. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Yeah, but hey, I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord who was worthy to be praised. I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy to be praised. Who is worthy to be praised. Say, I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy to be praised. Can you say it? Who worthy to be praised. Say, I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy, worthy, worthy. Who was worthy to be praised. I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy to be praised. Who was worthy to I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy to be praised? Who was worthy to be praised? Say, I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. He's gonna respond to His word. Who is worthy to be praised? Say, I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy, worthy, worthy? Who is worthy to be praised? Say, I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who was worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to 
somebody ought to give the Lord praise in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to church, everybody. Welcome to church. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord? Welcome online, everyone that's online. We're so glad that you are here with us today. It's our prayer time. I'd like everybody that can stand to stand. Amen. Do me a favor. Look to somebody and say, God bless you. Look to somebody else. Tell them, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I am so glad. I'm so glad that you are here today. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I consider it a privilege to be in the land of the living. Amen. After traveling yesterday, being in Detroit to be with family, uh, flying back this morning, uh, just appreciating life and witnessing and watching life change. Things are changing. Amen. And God is still good. And so we give him praise. And I want to just say you're in the right place today at the right time. Amen. Let's get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. I want you to just consider your heart, consider your mind, the things that you're dealing with, the things that you're dealing with, those challenges that you're dealing with. Um, I would really like if you would grab a hold to the scripture that says to cast your cares. Cast them. Give them to him. Last I checked, every human being has a few cares, at least a few. Amen. And I'm here to announce that the one thing that is the deliverer, that is the healer, that is the, the fixer-upper of, of these things is Jesus Christ. So I want you to just bow your heads when you're near somebody. Amen. If you're near somebody, look to them and say, I'm praying for you. Be with that person. Bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise for this day. I give you praise because we understand that someone did not make it to this day. So, Father, we're here today to just say we honor you and we love you for your goodness and your mercy, Father. I mean, you are our only God, the only God. And we give you all praise, you and your sovereignty, your majesty, and your amazing love, your concern, your care that you have for us, God. It's amazing. And even as I announce it out of my mouth, I feel your presence right now. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here with us. And God, we just say thank you. Father, I bless you for every person under the sound of my voice in this house or online. And I thank you for their life. Father, I thank you because you have been good to them. Amen. You have blessed them. You have kept them, Father. Doesn't mean that everything is peaches and cream, God, but you just been that good to us. And Father, for that we say thank you. We thank you for the measure of life that you've given us, the measure of health, the measure of strength, Father, in the name of Jesus. And even those things that are not favorable, you taught us that in everything give thanks. And so, God, we give you thanks for everything right now. We give you thanks for the mountaintop moments. We give you thanks for the valley moments because in it all, Father, we learn to trust in you. In it all and through it all, we learn to depend on you, God. And we say thank you, God. I ask that you will be a healer today for someone under the sound of my voice that needs healing in their body, healing in their mind, Father. Be a healer today. Be a deliverer today, Father. For someone that has issues in their family, in their home, Father, set things straight in the name of Jesus. Humble us by your hand. 
that we may do the right thing, that we may say the right thing, Father, that we may be examples of who you have called us to be, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the miracles that will happen in our homes this week. We thank you for the miracles that will happen on our jobs this week. We thank you, God, for the blessings that you will bestow upon us, Father. However, whenever, whatever it is, God, we say thank you for it right now in advance, God. Most importantly, God, I thank you for, amen, the opportunity of salvation. And I pray, Father, that someone today will say, what must I do to be saved? That they may give their life to you. Father, they, they will make a decision to want to be baptized in your name and be filled with the precious gift of your Holy Spirit, Father. Do that today for somebody somewhere in the name of Jesus. Now, God, as we have this service today and we bless, amen, our young people who have who have graduated and who are being promoted, God, I thank you for them. Father, I thank you for their families, Father, who have endured the process with them and are enduring the process with them. God, bless them and keep them in the name of Jesus. Bless us as we give your name praise today, as we give you honor today, God, as we thank you for being good to us, to God. I pray that you will help us, amen, through every trial, every tribulation that we are dealing with, God. Bless us and keep us and give us favor in it, Father. But we'll give your name praise today. We'll honor you. We'll thank you for your goodness. We'll shout your name, Father, amen, in this church, outside this church, wherever we are, because you are our God. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Somebody just say, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Again, welcome to church today. Amen. This is a great day. It is a busy day, but it's going to be a blessed day. Uh, I understand uh, and know that our women's ministry will be having an amazing event after church. So see, Sister Tracy, I see you all in your lays and your flowers looking beautiful. Amen. And I'm sure if you don't have one, they have one for you. Uh, but it's going to be a great time today. But the first thing I would like to do, I want to call up our youth pastor. It is time to recognize our young people. Y'all please receive Pastor Dane in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord and good morning. Welcome to Celebration Sunday. Amen. Aren't you guys so proud of our young people? In a moment, I'm going to go down a list of all the different students we have here that are promoting or graduating um, with amazing academic recognitions, and we're going to go over some of their next year plans, so it's going to be a beautiful ceremony. I just invite you all to just join in with us and support them and love on them. Amen? Let's get this started. So first, we have promoting from early transitional kindergarten to kindergarten. Next year, he plans on continuing with sports and school. He's passionate about dancing and doing math. Amen. Early, too. Tyree Burnell. Amen. Our next student who is promoting from elementary to middle school, next year he plans on getting straight A's. He's passionate about soccer and playing video games with his friends. Let's give a round of applause to Jace Allen. Next, we have promoting from kindergarten to first grade. An academic uh, recognition was valedictorian of his kindergarten, amen? Next year, he plans on being the kings of first grade. He's passionate about arts and crafts. James Leone. Now promoting from kindergarten to first grade as well, Next year, she plans on succeeding in the first grade. She is passionate about arts and crafts. Lena Branch. Next, promoting from elementary to middle, was an A honor roll student. 
Next year, she plans on taking electives and courses geared towards engineering and technology. Ariana Young. And she's passionate about technology and engineering. Next, promoting from elementary to middle. Next year, she plans on attending Ross Middle School. She is passionate about school and learning. Monique Ford. student is graduating or promoting from elementary to middle school. Next year he plans on attending Townsend Junior High. He is passionate about basketball. Nissan Carter Stewart. Next, next promoting from elementary to middle. Academic recognition of an A honor roll. Next year, she plans on attending Ramirez Middle School. Brooklyn Stewart. Brooklyn is passionate about owning her own modeling agency. She's also passionate about modeling. She loves playing softball, but more importantly, she loves being a good person. Next. Promoting from elementary to middle school, A honor roll student. Next year, she plans on being a cheerleader. She is passionate about art and cheer. Savannah Flowers. <laughs> Promoting from elementary to middle. Next year, she plans on uh, attending middle school, obviously. Um, she is passionate about drawing. London Vasquez. She may not be here, it's okay. Good job, London, we're proud of you. Next, promoting from middle to high school, A honor roll student. Next year, she plans on attending Chino Hills High School. She's passionate about business, Jade Stewart. Next, promoting from middle school to high school, academic recognition of an A honor roll. Next year, he plans on running track with the second fastest mile at his school, Christopher Flowers. Christopher is passionate about music and making his family proud, and he loves to study videography. Next, promoting from middle school to high school, A honor roll student, principal's honor roll, 4.0 GPA for seventh grade and eighth grade, academic achievement for maintaining a 3.5 to 3.99 GPA for all three years, Christiana Ravenel. Next year, she plans to attend high school, then college, and work on earning her associate's degree while attending high school. Dual enrollment, amen. Um, she is passionate about providing help or care to others and would like to become an OBGYN. Next, graduating high school, receives recognition from Congress for his completion of his high school diploma. Next year, he plans on attending a local college for music engineering and computer coding, as well as working on writing and creating music as an artist. Ty Sanders. Ty is passionate about computers and creating music. Next, graduating from high school, next year he's planning to attend Cerritos College and he is passionate about basketball, Elijah Arch.
Next, graduating from high school with an A honor roll, several academic scholarships, uh, the Corona Norco School District Harriet Tupman Award for Community Service and Leadership was also the best performer on Norco High School Varsity Dance Team, Jada Flowers. Next year, Jada plans on attending the University of Arizona and majoring in psychology. She is passionate about helping people. Next, graduating high school and will be attending Northridge College next year and passionate about photography, Alyssa Holmes. Next up, graduating high school. Next year, she plans on attending a two-year college to increase her maturity level before transferring to a four-year college. She is passionate about caring for the sick and showing all the girls in the hood, if God can do it for me, he can do it for them also. Jalen Williams. I don't see the next person up, but I'm gonna go ahead and read their name. Um, next, so pause, uh, Denisha. Um, next, graduating from high school. Next year, she plans on attending college, and she's passionate about school. Ashley Boykin. Congratulations, Ashley. We're proud of you. Okay, next up, graduating high school with an A honor roll. Next year, she plans on attending Santa Monica College. She is passionate about science and technology and will be studying computer science and neuroscience. Denisha Carrington. Next, graduating from high school, from Wilson High. Next year, he plans on attending Long Beach City College. He is passionate about sports, skateboarding, family, and traveling. Jalen Thompson. Okay, next up, graduating high school. Next year, she plans on attending Long Beach City College as well, and she is passionate about nursing. Ella Alexander. I don't see our last two students, but I'm gonna go ahead and read their names still. Um, Ariana Lawson, graduating high school. Next year, she plans on attending college, and she's passionate about helping others. We are proud of you. And our last one, let's see. Graduating from the Universal Technical Institute in Collision Repair and Refinish Technology, she had an A honor roll, highest honors and professionalism. Next year, she plans on working as a design refinished technician. She's passionate about music, art, gym time, family, and friends. Latricia Scott. As you guys' as youth and young adult pastor, I just want to say I am so, so proud of you. For some of you guys, I've been with you for four years. I've seen you walk down, you know, some hard times, some good times. And you guys made it. So I love you. I'm proud of you. And I know you guys will continue to do amazing things. Amen. Why don't y'all do me a favor? Just stand up and turn around. Y'all stand up and turn around. Let's celebrate these young men and women. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. You may be seated. I got a message. I think we have one more who is uh, promoting as well. I'm not sure if I can see you, but Jackson Bland. Come 
Congratulations. I like those shorts. One more time, one more time. Amen. I love our young people. I love what God is doing in their life. It's an amazing thing to watch them flow, grow, flourish, learn, develop. And so I want you all to know as your pastor, I know y'all sitting in the front, y'all used to sit in the front, but I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. And if there's ever anything we can do for you, we will do that for you and support you in Jesus' name. I wanted to do something. I'm going to deliver a word, but I want, wanted to do something today um, to these young people. I know they're at a critical and important time in their life. And so uh, I asked one of our friends to come and share today. We all know uh, the Reed family, Marae Reed, uh, and her uh, sister and brother and her mother, who is a master educator. That's what I call uh, Miss Marsha. But I asked Marty Reed to come. I just, I, for some reason, I want to say Dr. Marty Reed. I don't know why, but <laughs> I want to say it. I want Marty Reed to come up. I want to give you all some of her accolades. She is a UCLA and NCAA softball champion. She was the 2012 UCLA Senior of the Year. She was, is or was the Director of National Partnerships at Positive Coaching Alliance, and she's a national speaker. She's a coach. She is an author of an, an amazing book, which we're going to bless our young people today with, as well as anyone that wants to purchase a book. Uh, her book is called uh, Utility Player Life. And I asked Marty if she would come. So we're going to call Marty up, and she's going to say a few words to encourage our young people and you all in Jesus' name. so much, Pastor Nissan. Wow, it is such a blessing to be here today. I know a lot of you don't know me or you recognize me as Mare's little sister, um, but I'm excited to be here and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share today in the house of the Lord. I'm going to try to keep this quick, but uh, I was blessed with the gift of the gab, so I'm not going to block my blessing, Pastor Nissan. No. Uh, can we just give another round of applause for the graduates here? Wow. Truly, truly an honor just to be in your presence today. I mean, not only did you graduate, that's already a major milestone, major accomplishment, but you did it in such a time as this, right, with a global pandemic going on, you know, all these distractions and everything, and you still were able to overcome that, something I've never done. I never graduated during a global pandemic, you know, and a lot of people won't do that in their lifetime. So I really want to say congratulations again to the graduates and as I was just meditating and praying over what to share with you all today, uh, God gave me next level energy. That's what I want to talk to you about, next level energy. Now, I have the pleasure to travel around the world speaking with uh, athletes and coaches, uh, students as well, all about life lessons through sports and, you know, how to make it to the next level. They're always asking, Marty, what does it take? What does it take to get to that next level? All right, and it starts with a belief. A belief in yourself, a belief in God. You know, when you believe something, that's when you know it to be so true, you live your life according to it. If you know it to be so true, you, leave your, you live your life according to it. You have to believe in God and believe in the dreams that he's placed in your heart. Right? When you have that unwavering uh, belief that's all-consuming, let that lead into enthusiasm. Everybody say enthusiasm. The last four letters... And the word enthusiasm or I-A-S-M. And I like to say that means I am sold myself. When it comes to goals and dreams, when it comes to your faith, you got to be fired up, excited, and enthusiastic when you're talking about this. All right? You have to keep that positive attitude. Now, I learned a lot of lessons from my college coach. She taught me a lot of lessons that I use in life today. And she talked about making sure that you keep that positive attitude. It's something that you can control. Now, I know that it's not easy, right? We're going to have those hard days. We're going to have those hard times, right? We have those hard days, hard times. That's why it's important to surround yourself with people that can pick you up in those moments, right? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Making sure that you're surrounding yourself with other people that are also positive and enthusiastic. My coach, my, my college coach, she taught me the 33% rule. She said there's three types of people in life. 
You have your bottom third type of person who's always negative, and they're just sucking the energy out of you. All right, these are people that always got something to say. They're always talking about you. We call them the quote unquote haters. How many of you got some haters in your life? Yeah, I mean, my high school coach was a hater. I'm just gonna put it out there. He was. I remember my freshman year of high school, and some of you are uh, at that age, I remember my freshman year of high school, I got my first letter from UCLA of interest for me to go play softball there. And I was so excited, my teammates, they were all excited and they ran up to our coach, they said, coach, did you hear? Marty got a letter from UCLA. He started laughing. And we were like, wait a minute, what's so funny? Kid you not, he looks me in the eye and says, oh, nothing, I just thought they recruited good players. Hater, right? <laughs> you know, so I wish I could tell you that in that moment, I overcame that and persevered and kept going. No, I tried to quit. I told my mom, I'm done, I'm over it. I don't wanna play anymore. I don't wanna play this, I don't need this, I'm over it. And she was like, huh? You're going to stick this out. You committed to your teammates. You don't play for him. You play for your team. If you want to quit, you do it after the season's over. We're going to stick this out. Thank God I listened to my mom, stayed through it, and a new coach got hired, one that was much more positive, much more enthusiastic, helped me fall in love with the game again. I went on to play at UCLA, went on to win a championship, got to meet President Obama. So many different things happened after that. But be careful of those haters. They really try to steal your joy and block your blessing. So we gotta stay away from the haters, right? And then you have the middle third type of person. These are the people that sit on the fence, all right? They sway with the wind. One day, they have your back. When you're doing everything great, they got your back there, right there. As soon as you fall down, they're the first ones talking about you behind your back. First ones to leave your side. Be careful of that middle third as well. And you have the top third type of person. These are your positive people, the enthusiastic ones. Have your back on good and bad days. Right? These are people you want to surround yourself with, and you want to be that type of person for your circle as well, being that top third type of person. And I think that's so important, who you're surrounding yourself with. That is next level energy. That is next level energy. And we talk about how important it is to make sure that you're staying in the word of God and staying true to that as well. Now, I love all of you sitting here today. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. My verbal appreciation isn't enough. I'm gonna give everyone a signed copy. All you graduates, a signed copy of my book, Utility Player Life, because I'm so proud of you. And when I was at UCLA playing softball there, I was a utility player. I played multiple positions. I came in as a shortstop, but sometimes I'd play outfield, sometimes I'd play infield. I was actually watching the College World Series, the Women's College World Series with my fiance, and he was asking me, you know, what, what was your favorite position to play? I said, anywhere the coach put me. I really embraced that role. I said, I'll be able to, I'll be a second baseman, outfielder, wherever you want it, right? So I, I thought, I got to thinking, we're all utility players, all utility players in life. We play multiple positions. We're all a friend to someone. We're all a family member to someone, right? We're all a student in life, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about that one. We're all um, professionals in life, whatever you do to earn a living. We're also all community members in life, how we, you know, give back and have an impact on others is so important. I want to talk to you more about being a student in life. It doesn't just stop in education. It's whatever you're doing, constantly learning and growing, looking to continue to grow. We constantly can be a student in life. And those that are going on or considering to, you know, continue your education in college, I highly, highly recommend that you continue your education. as something that no one can take away from you. Keep learning, continue to learn, continue to grow, and continue with that education. It just the educational part alone is half of it in college, but the ability to surround yourself with like-minded individuals in that learning environment, right? the social-emotional learning skills that you're gonna gain with that, I highly recommend to continue your education and value that, and stay in the word. Stay in the word of God. There's so many things in the Bible that talks about how powerful the word of God is. Hebrews 4.12 talks about how the word is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm telling you, that's next level energy. In the book of Psalms, it talks about how the word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. You have to stay in the word. That is next level energy, I promise you. I'm almost done, I'm gonna wrap up here, but I'm just so excited for the the path that you're all on right now. We're so grateful for you all. Stand up for us again. Stand up. Look at them. Yes, yes, yes. 
And I'm going to leave you all with this. God sees you. God knows you. God loves you. And he lives within you. And nothing can dim the light that shines within. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Thank you all so much. And God bless you. Congratulations again to the class of 2022. One more time for Dr. Marty Reed. Yeah, amazing, amazing. What, what a blessed church we are. What a blessed church family we are to have amazing people to come in contact with, to bless us. To you young people, this is a great time in your life. I know you all are excited because summer is here. And so for some of you guys, it's going to be cracking. And you're going to have fun and you're going to do things that you want to do. Um, I understand this society right now and what's going on in our streets, not only here in Los Angeles and Linwood, but in the various cities around the country. I understand that there are options and many of our young people are being pulled in many directions. And within the last year or so, I've eulogized about 10 people under the age of 25. And to sit and witness that, it lets me know how important the Church of the Living God is and how important we as believers, we who claim to be members of any church or churchgoers, it's important for us to not only talk the talk but walk the walk very important. So for you youngsters, uh, Marty has already preached. I'm going to give uh, just a little bit of exhortation for everyone in here. Um, and I, I want to use for a topic, and this will bless everybody, I want to talk about the other side of this. The other side of this. I'm excited for you young people today uh, because you stand in a place uh, and in a season where you all are coming to or have come to an amazing opportunity. Um, hearing the accolades are wonderful. All of you all. No, no one's greater than the other. Uh, doesn't matter whether you got straight A's, honor roll. I was not an honor roll student. That's why when I witness Jade every year, every semester, getting these honor roll letters, I'm like, wow she did not get that from me. <laughs> or maybe she did, but maybe I didn't do the work to manifest it, to make it happen. But whatever it is, whatever it is, you, you know, we're, we're at a great place in, in time in our life, and I understand when it comes to opportunities, I need you all to understand this, especially you seniors, because this matters. Um, some people seem to just attract opportunities, and others work hard to be opportunity generators, you know, it's different. You know, there's two ways to recognize opportunity. That's, that's either discovering the opportunity or creating the opportunity. I'm an individual in my life. Many of the things that I've been successful in, uh, those opportunities weren't just given to me, but I had to go and generate and create the opportunity. Um, and it's because I think God wanted me to put in extra work. Uh, in the areas in life that I've been successful in. Um, but recognizing opportunities is really a cognitive process. You have to see it. You have to have your mind in the right place. You have to uh, allow um, space for clarity in your mind so that you can see what God is placing in front of you. Um, my question for many of us here today, because not only are these young people out of place in their life for opportunity, but some of our older folks, we're in a place of opportunity right now. And many times, uh, our mind is clouded. So my question for you at this point is, what has your mind? What has your mind to, you, to the place that you cannot see God single-handedly giving opportunities and placing them right at your 
feet. Many times it's our insecurity that does not allow us to see the opportunities that God uh, is blessing us with. Many times it is the trauma that you've experienced in your life that doesn't allow you to see the opportunities that God has for you. But I've come to understand, and I believe this with all of my heart, for whether you're graduating from uh, TK, whatever you call it, going to kindergarten, or if you're uh, 80 years old, getting ready to get into your 90s. I'm going to tell you, success can happen at any time for anybody. It can happen at any time for anybody. Concerning these young people, because I want them to understand this, you don't have to wait till you are old to make a lot of money. I don't know who that is for. I know some of us are past that age, but you youngsters, hear me good. You do not have to wait to, you are old to make a lot of money. There is a gentleman by the name of uh, Nick D'Alozio. And at the age of 12, he started coding. At the age of 12, he started coding, which led him to develop a news app by the time he was 17 years old. That eventually led him to, uh, to receive a deal from Yahoo that bought his app for $30 million before he was 20. Not only young men, there was a young lady by the name of Ashley Qualls back in the day, in the MySpace days. I don't know if y'all remember. Y'all don't know nothing about MySpace. They're like, what is that? <clears throat> That's how this social media thing started happening. But Ashley, she, she's the founder of, of whateverlife.com and her uh, ingenious idea that she came up with back in 2004 uh, when she was 14 was to showcase her design skills. Just like you all have your phones and you guys are just creating designs and doing things. I don't know about you, but my kids do it for, 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 for me or for, for a toy. They, 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 they just, uh, we need something done. They be like, give it to me. Let me do it, Dad. But this young girl uh, created this thing to design her, uh, showcase rather her design skills. And at the end of the day, an, an anonymous buyer wanted to give her $1.5 million as a teenager. In wisdom, she declined and later ended up making millions of dollars. So you don't have to be old to make money. I, I'll tell you about a friend of mine uh, from Chicago, Illinois. As many of you, all, of you all have heard of Pastor Charles Jenkins. Uh, he sings uh, and the songwriter of the song that we sing here, This Means War, big song. Uh, that we sing, but uh, I met Charles years ago uh, at the age of 24. At the age of 24, he became the lead and senior pastor of Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, pastoring over 3,000 people. It took the late, great Reverend Clay Evans to see this young man and to install him as being a pastor. 3,000 people. I went to the church. We went and seen it. It's just amazing. Him preaching as a young man leading so many people. I've come to understand that this moment is very crucial for these young men and women as far as I'm concerned. And the fact is that the future is in their hands. I know people don't like to hear that because in order for the future to be in their hands, sometimes some things have to leave your hands. One of the hardest things for us as human beings to let go of some things and give it to somebody else. But the future is really in their hands. The future of technology is in their hands. The future of sports is in their hands. The future of design is in their hands. The future of medicine is in their hands. The future of law and politics is even in their hands. And the future of the church is in their hands. I know y'all don't like to hear it, but I'm talking right. These are, these are our next young leaders, our young teachers here. There's a scripture in the Bible that we've coined as a universal theme here at Grady Emanuel Temple. For years, we read the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. It's very good. I love it because it's, it talks about the relationship between Paul and Timothy. And so for you young people that are into certain things like myself at Star Wars, I'm into Star Wars. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like the relationship between uh, Paul and Timothy is kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. Some of y'all don't know. Y'all been saved too long. Y'all don't watch that stuff. It's the devil, whatever you can say, whatever you want to say. But it's about a teacher and an apprentice. And Timothy, 
uh, is a young man, and Paul sees the future of the church, and so he writes to him in 1 Timothy 4 and 12. He says, let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in, pu and in purity as well. You got to understand this. It's really hard to disregard people for their age. You know, many times people look at individuals because they're kids, because they're young. But when I see these young people, I try to be nice to them. I try to be kind to them. You never know when you get old and you get to that place. Maybe some of y'all are not there yet. Where it's just hard to get up out the chair. Yesterday at my uncle's funeral, my, uh, one, of, one of my father's first cousins, Ron Benson, uh, he's been here many times and seeing him now. He's, he's in his 80s, and he had, he's walking with a cane, my brother, uh, my cousin Ron, and, and, and he tries to get up out of the chair. We're getting ready to go view uh, our uncle's body, and he, he needs help. I come behind him. I say, I, I got you. I got you, cuz. I got you, cuz. And as I thought, and I follow him, I'm watching, because last time I saw him, he w didn't seem that old. And now many of us, one of my friends at home, I know he's watching right now, he, he, he couldn't get up and go do his good work in the pulpit because his back, because we are getting older, things are changing. It's hard to disregard people for their age when their gift is, is, is seen, is visible, when their character is good, when their conduct is impeccable. It's hard to disregard them, and not just them, but there's individuals that may not be displaying those characters right now. We don't give them away. We don't throw them away. No, we cannot do that. Amen. It takes somebody good to be around them to help bring out those qualities within them. Oh, I think I'm lying. Listen, God brought out some good things out of you. Uh, there's things that I couldn't see myself doing. God brought these things out of me. He showed me me. Amen. Not only was it my father, but it was great men and women that said, I see something in you, young man. And I'm grateful to this day for it. But the charge that Paul, and I'm almost done, that he gave Timothy, his understudy, his apprentice, was that you are never too young to be used by God. Let me say that to these on the front row and on the second row. You are never too young to be used by God. But you have to understand this. No matter how much you prepare yourself, no matter all the accolades that you receive, the honor rolls, all of those things, you will stumble into the unknown. You'll find yourself into the unknown. But as Marty said, the word should be a lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. So parents, you have a responsibility to teach this to your children. Say it morning, say it noon, say it night. They may get sick of it. Keep saying it because sometime down the line they'll face an obstacle in the road and they'll remember what you shared with them. I'm going to tell you this in my closing, y'all. This moment in time, you'll never get this moment back. You'll never get this moment back. No, no, no. Uh, there will be uncharted territory, but you got to remember that someone else has been where you are. Me, as your pastor, as your pastor, as your, 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 your pastor, I want you to know that I am here for you. I will be here for you. You young men, you need to know that. You young women, you need to know that there are women here that will be here for you to encourage you and help you. And if anybody mess with you, Come tell me. Got it? Come tell me. Now, when we're talking about this, the other side of this, what happens on the other side uh, happens based on what you do now. That's for everybody in here. The manifestation of the other side depends on what you do now. What are your actions on this side? And there's some of us that are at crossroads, and there's a bridge that you have to walk to, to and 
walk over to get to the other side, amen, to another season in your life. I'm here to tell you right now that you cannot do it without trusting God. Doesn't mean you're going to understand everything. It doesn't mean you're going to know everything, but you have to ensure that you are motivated by the will of God. Everyone in here, I don't care where you are, what stage of life you're in, you want to make sure that you are motivated by the will of God. Greater is he that's within you than he that is within the world. You have to understand that God has been good to you. Amen. The proof has been in the pudding. You've seen God do many things before. Amen. And God does not stop. He will do great things again in your life. Maybe something hasn't happened recently, but I'm here to tell you, if you trust God, put your faith in God, understand exactly who God is in your life, great things can happen for you. But you got to know this. I'm going to give you one last scripture. Psalm 20, verse 7 and 8. Uh, it says, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and we stand up. You got to understand the Gentile kings of that time, they, they were happy about what they had. They had we, we purchased all these things. We got all this stuff. Uh, amen. That's why we're good. Amen. Yeah, we can trust in machinery. You can trust in certain things, certain apps, all these things. Let me tell you, all those things will fail. But the man or the woman that trusts in God will always win. Now I'm closing. I'm done sharing with y'all, but I want to testify. I want to testify. Because life is precious and we never know what happens. And I try to live in a space where I'm going to be as good as I can. As good to people as I can. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. I'm going to be nice to people. I'm going to love people. Because in a blink of an eye, something can happen that can change the trajectory of your life. Last Sunday, Last Sunday morning, I was here. I flew back home last Saturday to be in our bishop's wedding. Bishop Noel Jones uh, came down to the church to go back to the airport because it didn't make sense to drive home 45, 50 miles, be there for two hours, not get no sleep, and go back to the airport. So I came here. Marvin was here. Deacon Marvin was here. I left the church. We were leaving the church. Some of the brothers come by at night to make sure that uh, your church property is taken care of because everybody don't care about it like you. So I thank God for those that do that. I pulled out the parking lot. I said peace to Mark. I looked to the left right here on Carson. I looked to the left. There was no cars. It was 6.15 a.m. No cars. I looked to the right. A car had just passed the, the light going west. I'm watching that car because in my mind there was no cars coming. As soon as I got out in the street, I had a car accident. I never had a car accident like this before. Hit a car, hit a car, hit a car. Marvin heard it, ran up. We took care of the business. What happened? I don't know where this car came from because the language barrier of the driver and myself, I didn't know. It was very difficult to understand. But number one, I thank God for insurance. But as I stood in front of the church, as I watched how traffic whips around coming east on Imperial, I stood there for a moment and I thanked God. And God said, look up. I looked down Imperial and saw a bus. <laughs> looked down Imperial and saw a truck. And the Lord said, it could have been another way. And in that moment, it was just one of the many, many, many reasons that I can come to church, amen, or if I can't come to church, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and how good God is to me in every situation, look to somebody and say, it could have been worse. Whatever happened to you, it could have been worse. So when we make excuses for why, and this and that, and we have all these problems, amen. Let me tell you something, amen. The time, God's timing is impeccable, and I can't talk about nobody else's situation. 
But the timing was impeccable. I looked to the left. Look, I looked. There was no car there. There was a truck that shouldn't have been parked that far off the block. But I said, God, I thank you. You could be 48 and something tragic can happen. You could be 18. Something tragic can happen. You could be in school. As is evident as we've been watching the news and something tragic can happen. You can be in the mall, at the park, wherever, and something tragic can happen. The premise of what I'm saying and even what Marty was saying to you, at the end of the day, we have to stay in the word. And when we stay in the word, we can learn how to trust God. And then in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. So I'm grateful to be alive today. I'm grateful nobody was in the passenger car, because if I was to show you pictures of the passenger side of the car that I hit, it could have been all bad. It could have been all bad, but I give God praise. And I thank God for another opportunity, amen, to, to, to elevate my trust in him. So for these young people here, things happen in life. And you may say nothing has happened yet. As you keep living, things will happen. My prayer is that God will protect you. Protect you physically. Protect your mind. Protect you from the enemy, those young men and women that may try to sway you into some things that you know goes against your beliefs. And so I just want y'all to know I love you. And what I want to do is I want to pray for them. Elder Jones, do you have any the oil here? I want to anoint you all. I'm going to just pray for you all. I want y'all to come stand down here in front, young, young people. And then after this, you can go back to your, you can go to your normal seats. Y'all can stand right here. Y'all stand right here and face me. Elder Freddie Jones is going to anoint you. We're going to pray for you. And I want everybody to stand in this place because I want to pray for you. If you're an individual that you seen on one side and you know there's something for you on another side, I want you to just raise your hand. Maybe it's a business that you start. Maybe it's something great. Maybe it's, maybe you're not married or maybe you're getting ready to be married. Maybe something is happening and you, you, you're like, okay, there's, there's more and I got to do more and I, there's some things I got to do. I want to be used in ministry, whatever it may be. I want to pray for you today. And one thing I'll say before I pray with these young people, for these young people, I want you to understand this. I'm going to say this. God has been dealing with me with this particular thing about the last six to eight months concerning ministry, concerning his church. Because it's a different day. Leadership is different. Style is different. And God, I know, is tapping some of you all on the shoulder because he wants to use you for his glory. He wants to use you and some of you all that are in here. He wants to use you for ministry. He wants to use your voice. And sometimes we are fearful because of the state of the church and everything we've seen and all the foolishness we see in the church. But I cannot give in to the enemy's tactics. I cannot give in to the fact that he wants to shut the mouths of the future leaders of God's church. The devil is a lie. And I know that God is going to raise up people. I'm not saying it's, it is you, that you all are going to be preachers and all that. I'm not saying that. But I don't know what God is going to do. I just want to prepare you as God speaks to you. Because as you get older, you're going, to see, you're going to start seeing things, seeing things that you've never seen before. And you're like, whoa, what is that? And the enemy will try to make you think it's something else. And it'll be God trying to show you some amazing things for your life. So I want to just pray for you all today because I love you and I want you all to be successful. Dear God, I thank you for these young people. I thank you for how great they are. I thank you, Father, for their life. Thank you for the love that their family has for them. I thank you for how amazing you are. I thank you, God, 
because they are beautiful creatures. They're blessed. We declare favor in their life. We declare her protection in their life. We declare wisdom in their life, God. I pray that you will open doors for them. I pray that you will provide for them. My prayer is that you will supply all of their needs in the name of Jesus. That you will keep them from hurt and harm. God, I bless you for them in their young age and as they develop, Father. I pray that you will work out miracles in their life and that you will use them to be able to bless somebody else. And as they bless others, God, be a blessing to them. And Father, any harm that may come to them, we bind it now in advance in the name of Jesus. We as a church family, we pray for these young men and women who are going to do great things. Somebody shout great things. It's going to happen. And God, bless everyone under the sound of my voice who was at that crossroad where they're at a bridge of new opportunities, God. Give them courage. Give them faith. Elevate their trust. God, give them the strength necessary for the task. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and honor and glory. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. You all may go back to your regular seats. Love you guys. Let me sit with your family. Listen, listen. We are a blessed church to witness these young people just looking at pictures Myself, looking at pictures, me holding some of them when they were young, and now they're almost big enough to hold me, just a little bigger, but you know. But we're so grateful for each and every one of them. Hey Amen. I'm going to just remind everybody, as summer is approaching, as summer is approaching, and as the culture and the state of the world is shifting, I want you all to be mindful, be wise. As the word says, watch and pray. Don't be praying so much that you forget to watch. There are people that are out there that mean you no harm, mean you, I mean mean you harm, excuse me, and they mean you no good. So be wise in this season. Amen. And we as a church family, let's do what we can to help one another in this time. Is that all right? Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise if you can. Amen. It's time for our giving here at Gritty Emmanuel. It's time for us to give. It's our offering time. Amen. I'm excited about our giving here at the church. Amen. Listen, I want to do something too today. I want to do something today. Uh, I don't do this. Y'all know me. I don't really do this in terms of the giving plea. Amen. But there are a couple of things that we want to do that we need to do here or that's actually already been done. But I want to be able to cover, amen, the cost of what it is. And I want to try to raise $20,000 today. Amen. So I'm going to say it. And I said that number because it was, give, it was dropped on me to say it today. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I don't know if I've ever, have I ever done that? I don't think I've ever done that. As I was upstairs buttoning up my shirt. <laughs> And I, I, that dropped into my spirit today. So for those that can, those that can support and help in what we're trying to do, we want to be able to just take care of some things. For the last 10 years, we have been great stewards over what God has blessed us with. Amen. We, we take care of business here, and I know that it is in your giving, your committed giving, and your tithing that helps us to continue to go forth and do great things in ministry. And I'm excited for not only what is now, but I'm excited about what's on the other side of this so those that hear that plea, those that hear your pastor, amen, some of you have already given to this because I've asked you uh, a few weeks back, amen, but I want you um, to just help those that can to dig a little deeper today. If you can, if you're watching online, amen, we want to expire some, some of our uh, debt here for some things that we've done and upgraded here at the church, and I need your help. I need your commitment, and even if you can't do it today, just be a part of it, attach with us as we do this. Um, because I want to get it done. I want to get it done within the next two weeks and be on to the next day. Amen. Because we have a lot to do in ministry. And I'm excited about the next phase of this church. In development now is uh, our plans for our ministries and how we will be moving forward. Amen. And what is, I believe, the future church, the future of 
God's church here at Greater Emmanuel. Amen. And I'm excited. I want you all to be praying for us. Amen. As we do things. Many of us are in transition. Many of y'all are in transition. Things are happening in your life. I've been hearing the testimonies, how God is using and blessing you. Amen. But for what we are doing here, amen, I want us to remain committed to the task of this ministry. Amen. And do what you can. Here, I'm I teach this at this church. It's not about how much you give, but it's about the heart in which you give. So, amen, as you're blessed, be a blessing to the kingdom. I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not doing. I am giving towards it as well. Amen. And so I want you all to just be committed to this task here at Grady Emanuel. Is that all right? Amen. So for everyone that's giving today, everyone that's giving today, if you want to give physically, there's an envelope on, on the back of your seats, and the, the, the deacons will receive that from you as you exit the building today. If you're giving by device, amen, the ways to give are on your screen here in the house, and for you that are watching on line. Amen. But for everyone that's given, whatever you're giving today, I want you to raise it. If you've given this week already, raise it high, whatever, however you're giving, just raise it, raise it, raise it, raise it. Amen. If you have a desire to give, but you don't even have to give today, and, and, and you really have a desire and want the Lord to see your heart, raise your hand too. Amen. We're praying for everybody in here today. Father, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. Amen. And how great you have been to us, God. I pray that you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. Father, open up the windows of heaven, as you said in your word, and pour out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive, Father. For every tither, honor them for their commitment. Bless 100, 1,000 fold, Father. Let miracles happen in many ways, Father. Bless as you see fit. And God will give you the praise and the glory. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll have some video announcements, and then I have a special announcement, and then our praise team is going to sing us out of here in Jesus' name. Hey friends, this is hey, friends, this is our week. This is the week of the Champions Club happening this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We're developing winning through the word. So join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. education class online according to your age group that's right just scan the QR code on the screen you can also access Christian education through GET's mobile app or on my-get.org see you online if you are in middle school or high school we have a lot of fun stuff planned for you this summer including six flags so make sure you scan your QR code and follow us on Instagram at GET Youth for more information. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Did you miss last week's service or would like to stay up to date with all of our pastor sermons? You can now on our posted social links through our new website. Go check it out at my-get.org. Not only can you catch up on services you've missed, but you can also have insight on all of our upcoming events and access all of our church's resources. If you have not yet, go visit the site today. We appreciate you joining us for church today. If you haven't yet, make sure you follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page to stay up to date with all of our new and upcoming events. Now we hope to see you back with us next Sunday. Have the most amazing week.
Amen. The Lord is good and the Lord is kind. Listen, I don't know if y'all know what next Sunday is. Uh, you see, yeah, Dad, we don't be getting that same energy, huh? Yeah. Next Sunday is Father's Day. And so we want, we want all, everyone that can, everyone that can, amen, uh, to come out next Sunday. If, if your father is living, invite him to church, or if you're going to church with him, we're praying that you have a blessed day. But we want to see all the fathers next Sunday. We're going to recognize all of them. This Wednesday, meet us at the Champions Club online Wednesday, a special Father's Day edition. Um, and I'm excited about that. But I, I'm going to give a special announcement. I've been hinting at it for a couple weeks. Um, but the Lord has placed an opportunity in front of us that uh, we had to grab, if you will. And um, I'm excited because I always talk about what we do here at Greater Emmanuel Temple concerning our music department, which we have a great music ministry here at Greater Emmanuel Temple. And so, and so, and so, what we are going to do what we have done, what we've been working on for uh, the past year off and on is a project in which is going to be titled, this music ministry here is G-E-T Legacy. G-E-T Legacy. And so I'm excited to announce to you that this Friday, this Friday the 17th, our first single is going to be released everywhere in the world. Our first single, that's right, our first single is titled Wait For You. We have recorded about eight, nine songs, and we're continuing to do this. We shot a video for this single um, that's going to be released this week. So Friday, Friday, I want everybody, I want everybody, everybody to go and stream, purchase whatever you want to do, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, everywhere. It's going to be there, amen. It's called GET Legacy Song, Wait For You, which features uh, Siobhan Stewart, uh, our brother Aaron Sledge, and myself. And so, when you see us posting about it, I need you all to repost on Facebook, on Twitter, on everything, TikTok. I need everybody to, to do that, to share. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this humbly. God has really blessed us with some amazing people that just throughout the history of this church, everybody that you see up here ministering, playing, singing every week, um, and our friends that come here just because they are friends of this church. And so that's what GET Legacy reflects. It reflects us. It reflects the past, it reflects the future, amen, the sound, we're going to have everything from left to right, literally, and y'all that know me or don't know me, you know, I've been in the music business, and the Lord has blessed me to be successful in it for the last 20 plus years, and I've been blessed to work with the absolute top tier people, so God pulled us in the direct into this direction, and uh, we're here creating music, some great stuff. Uh, we're going to have some stuff that grandma and them would like. We're going to have something that them kids would like. So it's going to be all over the place, and we're going to be doing it. So I, first thing I need from you all is I need your prayers in what we do because we are investing and making. I've been making personal things. It's going to come out uh, through, through my label, NCS Entertainment, that I've had. At least that's where the conception is going to come from. But at the end of the day, these people are songwriters. They write, they perform, they, they, they minister, amen. And, and my prayer is that as the song goes out uh, into the world, the things that they wrote on, um, which I've been admonishing all of them to write on, that it will be a blessing to them because they come up here and they work because they love it, amen. And there's nothing wrong with the Lord blessing us for doing it. And so we're going to do it, and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I might even play the single after church, so y'all online, I don't know if we're going to, you know, play it yet. But next Sunday, I'm also going to debut the video here at church after church. 
So it's a real thing that God has called us to. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So uh, as we get ready to go, stand up, grab your things, grab your things. We're going to get ready to get out of here. Get ready to get out of here. Amen. Look to somebody and say, I was glad to see you at church today. Amen. Find somebody else today that didn't respond. Say, no, I was really glad to see you at church today. Amen. And as they sing, as they sing, amen, I, I, my prayer is that you have a blessed and amazing week. Amen. And that you do what God has for you. Amen. Seize the week. Seize the opportunities. And remember, amen, there's more on the other side of this. We going home, y'all. Clap your hands. I just go and clap. Yes, yeah, go. On. Thank you.